Welcome to Gulfstream Park. It is March 14, 2014. Christina Basanakis, and I am joined by Stephen Skaggs. And, uh, Stephen, it is uh, becoming a little bit of a broken record here. Uh, the weather's been really cooperating with us. I uh, just had some rain last week, and uh, weather's been pretty good. But I know you get out there in early in the mornings and you're clocking horses. And uh, how, what have you seen in terms of how the track has improved or changed from last week? Well, it's very windy today. We've had a north wind, so it's, it's a tailwind on the front side. The wind's blowing in their face on the back side. So that might benefit two turn horses on the lead, and backers might be coming from it in the one turn races. So uh, the track has been, uh, we did see but plenty of speed cut coming in yesterday and uh, doing pretty well, I thought. And looking ahead, we just have so much happening, not only here uh, this weekend, but also in the weekends, lo looking ahead to the Florida Derby, the Florida Derby March 29th. What a card uh, that uh, Florida Derby Day uh, card is. And uh, I know that there's some horses that are going to be, we're going to be seeing some of their final moves in the mornings, the, you know, working, you know, setting them up for the big day. Right, it looks like General A-Rod, he has not worked since the Fountain of Youth, but I think he's going to have his first work in the morning. We'll be able to report on him. It looks like General A-Rod here at Gulfstream also going to be working. I see that Joel Rosario picked up that mount, but uh, those two will be our prime horses at Gulfstream, but a lot of those horses are stabled over at Palm Meadows. So Wildcat Red and General A-Rod, and uh, we were talking yesterday how uh, Todd Fletcher is going to be represented. He's got Commissioner, who seems to be going, Anchor Down might go, and uh, seems like the race is uh, stacking up as a pretty uh, good race. If you throw in Cairo Prince into the mix, you know, what a great race. And what if Social Inclusion shows up? The Now Horse just got a 111 buyer, which is That'll win the Derby. I think Orb ran about a 103 last year, so we had him set the track record on Wednesday, beat the grade two winner honor code, and I thought he did it in an open gallop. So tell me, Stephen, now that we have you here, in terms of a distance, do you think distance is going to be any type of issue for social inclusion? Well, do you think you'll be able to carry that speed a mile and an eighth? Absolutely. He's by Pioneer of the Nile out of a St. Bellotto mare. In fact, he should get better with distance, which is scary. He just hasn't been tested yet. We'll see how he is in a, in a horse race if he gets in a battle. And uh, Cairo Prince, we haven't seen him uh, since he won the uh, Fountain of Youth here. And uh, so what do you think about him coming off that layoff? Or not the Fountain of Youth, excuse me. The Holy Bull. The Holy he, Bull, yeah. He's the horse to beat. He is. And, and Kieran hasn't had to rush him. He has a good foundation in him. He had three races as a two-year-old. Now he, he won the Holy Bull here. So he's not really fighting for derby points. I think he's going to use the Florida Derby as a prep. I'm not saying he's trying to lose it or anything, but he doesn't have to win it. Yeah, he certainly doesn't. But we do have a fantastic uh, cast for this year's Florida Derby. And uh, before we get to that... We can take a look at today's card, and we do have a carryover in the Rainbow Six. We're just a tick over $3 million, and that starts in race five today. And a uh, couple of guarantee pools or guarantees tomorrow in the, the pick four, the late pick four, 200,000 guarantee, and the, the pick five, there's a 100,000 guarantee. And that's a tomorrow, every Saturday. And then going forward into Florida Derby, just a you know, tremendous day of also wagering opportunities. But, Stephen? Let's get to it, my man. Let's uh, get into the first race on today's card, and it is a maiden special weight. It's for state breads. Uh, six and a half furlongs on the main track. And uh, my top selection, I was a little betwixt and between in this one. I was uh, vacillating between uh, number one, Simon Bar Sinister, number three, Super Lucky. I ended up going with Simon Bar Sinister. He was training well going into his debut. He was on the rail. He unfortunately gets uh, back on the rail again today didn't have the cleanest of trip. I think he's going to be better off for that effort. I'm going to give him another shot because I think he's, uh, he's, he's good enough to win. Yeah, he was the steam horse that day. I think everybody thought he would win that day. I'm against him because that day he drew the rail. He didn't break as well. He steadied in the race. We're in the same spot today. State breads, he draws the rail again. I actually thought he might even look like a grass horse in that first race. I went with the three. Super lucky. This is the class of the field. This is a horse dropping from open into state bread. This horse got beat ahead to commissioner. 
at Saratoga. Today, blinkers on. It's a layoff, but I think the horse should be fresh. And Albatroni goes to his good rider, Lascano. They're a good jockey trainer connection. You see, a horse you didn't use, and that I thought uh, quite a bit of, is number four, and that's Pomeroy's package. They're going to be showing speed in here, I thought. Uh, and that might be a bit of a, an advantage. Now, we are going from five and a half furlongs, six and a half furlongs. I don't really particularly think that's going to be a problem. But uh, what do you think? Yeah, that horse is the speed of this race, but I was. The reason I didn't use him was the extra furlong. The horse ran second going five and a half. Today we're going six and a half, so I don't know if he'll carry the distance. Right, coming back off a layoff in his latest start, and uh, today uh, comes back and uh, another shot for Jane Sabelli. On to the second race on today's card, and this uh, kicks off the early pick four. And it is a 12 5 maiden claiming event. A mile on the main track, there is a scratch number six. Jim Jam and uh, a jockey change on number three is Joel Rosario. And uh, my top selection, I went with number three, Gray Day Lover, who Joel Rosario will now be aboard for Jamie Ness and uh, took some money uh, last time, was claimed out of that race. So making his first start for Jamie Ness. And, and Jamie Ness pretty effective with those first time claims. Right, 32% first off the claim, Jamie Ness. The three gray day lover will be in front of this field, so I think is the horse to beat. I went with the one flat in charge. This horse is dropping from maiden 50 to maiden 12.5. That's a triple drop. The horse is actually run against Ring Weekend, who just won the Tampa Derby. The horse is ran against Harpoon, ran second in the Sam F. Davis, got beat a nose. This horse was in the 12 hole today against Harpoon. It's come out of way tougher, Scooter Dickey. Good trainers, had luck with progeny of flatter, with flat out. I think this horse at eight to one, if you can get that, go for it. He employs Gabriel Saez. They're 25 percent on the meat jockey trainer combination. Another horse that both of us used uh, was a number four, put it forward uh, from the Giuseppe Discernia barn. Coming into this off of a fourth place effort and uh, thinking maybe he's going to might just step forward a little bit this time. This horse ran a 17 on the rags and sheets. That makes him the fastest horse if you're using those. And I like that it's a four year old. There's a couple three year olds in here. So maybe the four-year-olds have a maturity advantage. Yeah, they certainly do. Especially, I think, that transition from three to four. And, uh, you know, they become a mature horse. I always look for those. Uh, I, I tend to factor that into my calculations. On to the third race on the card. It is a 16,000 maiden claiming race, a mile on the turf course. And uh, my top choice, I went with number five, Hidden Intentions. Now, at first, the zero for 12 uh, looks a little bit scary. However, I think that drop in, uh, that uh, moderate drop, and also coming into this, I thought off a pretty good effort. I think uh, I'm hoping to put us in the winner's circle today. That was my original pick, but then you mentioned the 0 for 12. I feel like the horse has had enough chances, but 19 on the rags and sheets makes it the fastest horse if you're using that info. I went with the three, heaven help me, trained by Jane Sibeli, a broken vow out of a Dane Hill mare. I think this horse will be on the lead, and I hope that it can control the race using Joe Rocco. She's been winning races with him. They sure have. On to the fourth race on the card, and it is a, a, an allowance optional claiming test uh, with a claiming price of $100,000. It is six and a half furlongs on the main track. I think a pretty interesting heat here, Stephen. I went with uh, number two, Black Diamond Cat. Uh, I think uh, number one, uh, A Priority, is going to take plenty of money and uh, comes into this off of a third place effort last time, beaten only a length. We can take a look at uh, A Priority's last race, Stephen. And uh, I think he's a pretty, he's a pretty useful sort, but he hasn't really recaptured, I think, the form of prior. There's something about him that I just didn't want to put him on top. Yeah, well, he's a great at stakes winner. Now he's seven. I read David Fox comments. He ranged up in this race. He thought he was going to go by. He sort of hung. It might be an age thing. You know, now he's seven. He's in for 100000 today if for all you stallion shoppers. But there's three horses in here today for 100000 mm -hmm. I went what I thought with the five JIC is the young horse, the four-year-old facing way older. The reason I like JIC, two back, he ran against Evolution Rocks. Evolution 
Rock's Freak the other day. He's one of the fastest horses on the East Coast. JIC, a younger horse facing, it looks like horses that have tailed off or a little long in the tooth. I thought the four Cajun Breeze makes the lead in this race. He should be fresh. He's been training at a farm for Michael Yates, so we don't have a read on how well he's training. But this horse has some back numbers that makes him competitive in this five horse field. You know, um, another horse, uh, just getting back to Black Diamond Cat, you mentioned uh, horses that were in for a tag. Uh, Black Diamond Cat, originally a slate, uh, registered as it was going to be running for a $100,000 tag, is not in for a tag uh, today. And I just think that for me, the only the last race, the sixth beaten 13 lengths, what happened that day. Uh, but that was at Tampa. And Tampa is a different surface, vastly different surface than it is here at Gulfstream. Tricky track, two back. He ran against Rebo Bobo, happy my way. I guess the reason I could couldn't pick the horses. Larry Bates, a trainer, 0 for 18 on the meet. Jockey D. Gomez, 0 for 15 on the meet. I think he can maybe scoop up second or third, but I don't see him winning. Yeah, I'm, I hope you're wrong on that, <laughs> on that, on that count. <laughs> on to the fifth race on today's card, and this kicks off the Rainbow Six, and uh, we do have a carryover at $3 million. And uh, race uh, five is a seven and a half furlong, a turf race. It is a maiden special weight for fillies and mares, uh, four year olds and up. And I went with number two. Wow, we finally agreed today. And uh, of course, we're going to be in agreement with a horse being ridden by Javier Castellano. And that is a number two a street trick from the Tom Bush barn. Yeah, I thought she did all she could to win last time. I actually prefer the stretch out in distance from five eighths to seven and a half furlongs. This filly likes Gulfstream Park. She's ran here twice. She has two seconds. I think she's sitting on a win. And Tom Bush has had a, a great meet so far, five for 19. I like the three treasured also, though. I was torn between the two of them. I think it, it should be them two at the wire. I thought three treasured ran great off the layoff last time, was in the 10 hole that day. Just just got beat in neck. Louis Saez has been a regular rider. Today you get Julian Leperu. Yeah, Julian is aboard uh, number three. And those are the two horses I used, I think, for the, for the uh, show spot. We, we both went in a different direction. I threw in number seven, Magnolia Lane. This is a very well-bred daughter of the street cry, getting blinkers on for Shug McGahee. But there's a, I think that race is a, I think those two horses pr pretty much figure. On to the sixth race on the card, and is a 35,000 uh, claiming race, um, one mile on the turf course. And there is a jockey change, number four. Racetrack Romance is now going to be ridden by Paco Lopez, and this kicks off the pick five. And my top choice, I went with number four, Racetrack Romance from the Dale Romans Barn. And it came back off of a layoff, really didn't show much um, in that last start, Stephen. That was a 75,000 starter allowance, uh, and now we're dropping, we're dropping significantly. Right, 75 to 35. This was a difficult race for me. I can make a case probably for or against everybody in yeah. here. I sided with the five contributor. The horse already has a win here at Gulfstream Park, but also the three Ellie's Prince I thought ran big first time out for Brian Lynch. You get Abiel Jain back aboard, ran a 16 on the Ragazin sheets that's actually the fastest race in here and you got to think second time out with Lynch the horse might step forward only thing is face some winners first time I see another horse that you used is also number eight and that's Adesheen and this is a daughter uh, excuse me a son of exchange rate uh, making his first start on the turf and uh, obviously you're thinking that uh, he's going to be able to handle that well, I don't know if he will handle grass. Being a son of exchange rate, they're okay on it. But what I do like about this horse is he will make the lead. Austin Solis, Alex Solis's son, is on this horse, carrying 108 pounds a day. So you're going to be loose on the lead with the lightest jockey. Yeah, that always uh, always helpful and uh, helpful over this track. On to the seventh race on today's card. It is an allowance. Uh, Six furlongs on the main track, and uh, there is, um, yeah, it kicks off. The, sorry, <laughs> all like kicks off the late pick four, and uh, we do have a my top choice. I went with number five. Yes, I'm sweet. And again, Stephen, it seems we're in agreement here. I just uh, she, this filly is just such a consistent filly. And if you look at her last uh, five uh, or four starts, she's hit the board. She's just always in the mix of things, and I think that uh, she'll get it done. I think she was also beaten by a very, very nice horse last time, six queens. Right. I think she's improving too. I mean, she's four years old. She's won two of her last four races with two seconds. She's got a lot of 
try in her. And I like, there's a lot of speed in this race. I like that she can pass horses. So with Paco Lopez aboard, I expect him to sit off of the pace and, and maybe get first jump. But the six, Sweet Shirley May, has got to be the class of the field. She actually ran second in the grade one spin away, and she gets back on dirt today. And a couple of horses. I see that you also had used, uh, I think you also had, had used uh, number two best behavior in your top picks as well. Yeah, I think the, the five, yes, I'm sweet, and the two best behavior coming out of the same race. So, yes, I'm sweet, got the better over that day. I expect her to do it again. Okay, so on to the eighth race on today's card. It is a starter optional claiming race, a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course. We do have one scratch, and that is number 10, Palatine Hill, from the also eligible's main track only. And uh, my top selection, I went with number four, Countryman, and uh, running in the 35,000 uh, claiming company last time. I thought it was a pretty good effort after not a great, a particularly great start. But I see that you went in a, in a different direction with number eight, Vanquisher, a 10-year-old gelding who, by the way, I was on him last time. I really liked him in his last race, and he did win last time by a neck. Javier Castellano was aboard then. He's back aboard today. Yeah, difficult race. I could make a case for everybody in here as well. But I like the eight vanquisher. He's a war horse. He's 14 for 76. He's earned upwards of half a million dollars. And like you said, Javier gets back aboard. I like also the nine, Becky's Kitten, at a price. You cross out the last two races on dirt. This horse should be on the lead in this race. And I like how he's training. 20 to 1, I don't know if you'll get it, but I would definitely use the horse. Yeah, on to you also have number six, a uh, target sighted. Uh, Jessica Campitelli trains this one, comes into this just beaten just a neck uh, by Vanquisher last time. Right. If I like Vanquisher, I got to like target sighted. But he, your horse, the four countryman, I thought that horse ran great. Uh, second in a claiming $35,000 race. He hasn't won as many in here. He's not as exposed as some of these, but you know he's two for 11. There, there's some horses in here that just want to win. And Vanquisher being 14 for 76, he seems like he wins. You know, one out of five races, but a golf stream, five for 16. This yeah, is his track. Yeah, exactly. And the, the barn, uh, Niall Saville from uh, number four countryman, came through with a win yesterday with a similar type of horse. One of those horses starting off in Europe and then uh, making the returning or coming back and running here in the United States. On to the ninth race on today's card, and it is a starter optional claiming event. It is a 35,000 uh, claiming price and a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course and we do have a jockey change and that is a number six hurricane pass will now be ridden by Julian Leparu. And I went with a number seven, Proud Azteca, uh, from the Mike Maker barn. And a couple of second place efforts, Stephen. I was um, actually one that, that, that debut by DQ was awarded the victory after Aunt Ruby's kitten was taken down. Came back last time. I thought a pretty good race. I'm going to give him one more shot. Carrying 118 pounds today. I, I'm going to give him one more shot to get the job done today. I thought this was an interesting race. Out of seven horses in here, three of them have been put up via DQ. So we only have four horses that have crossed the wire first. Odd. But the six, Aunt Ruby's Kitten, was actually DQ'd in that race when beating Proud Azteca. The thing I like about Aunt Ruby's Kitten is technically this horse has won two races. So basically I got a multiple winner facing three horses that have never won. Yeah, this Certainly, and Dent Ruby's kitten just has proven very con consistent, at least in these uh, last couple of starts for trainer uh, Todd Pletcher, Todd Pletcher, Javier Castellano. Uh, that's a pretty tough combination, but I'm going to take a shot with Mike Maker and Joel Rosario um, here today. And on to the final race on the card, and it is a 25,000 maiden claiming event, five furlongs on the turf course. And uh, there's a scratch number 11, and that's a soccer holic from the uh, entered as main track only. And uh, I went with number seven, and that's I Want the Roses, uh, Michael Yates. Uh, it's a Michael Yates filly. She's going to be showing speed, I think, in here. Right, she's faster than these horses. The seven, I want the roses. Carson Sullivan, the 10 pound bug boy off. You get Joe Rocco today, rides the grass well down here. I like the one, Spa City Treasure, son of Shakespeare getting on the grass out of an Irish river mare. To me, the horse was competitive on the dirt, ran second. Now he gets, in my opinion, his preferred surface, but drew the one hole, very tough to do, going five ace on the grass at Gulfstream. And I thought the three, 
Automatic Jacks. I like this horse, trained by Eddie Plisa, ridden by Paco Lopez. You look three back, this horse ran behind Wildcat Red. Stephen, uh, before we let you go, and uh, not without uh, putting you on the spot here, but just because uh, we do have the Rainbow Six, and uh, that does start in the fifth race, any singles that you could think of, anybody that we think, maybe even in that first leg of it, that we could maybe narrow it down slightly? You see, I did put him on the spot. You say, how nice am I? <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's very difficult, but right now these Rainbow Pick Sixes are paying well, even with favorites. I think Wednesday we had... Four favorites, a second choice, and only one price horse. It paid $1,400. Yesterday, it paid $4,000. They're paying well. In the fifth race, I'm only using two horses there. I like the two and the three. But it is difficult. There's races that are wide open. If you picked, if you told me to pick my most logical winner on the day, I'm going with Todd Pletcher in the ninth race because I think you have an edge with the horse that, in my opinion, has two wins against horses that haven't won. Yeah, certainly. Well, always as sage advice uh, from Stephen Skaggs, who will be back on Sunday, but then I, I know that you're, uh, you're out of here. Yeah, I'm adios. Mm -hmm. I, I work at Keeneland as well, and unfortunately, I never get to see the Florida Derby down here in person, because I have to be up there, but... Um yeah, it'll be, it'll be my last day on Sunday, and I've had a great time doing this, trying to help the public, and hopefully I'm giving you all some winners. Yeah, you have been, because I've been taking some of them as well. We've been using all of your information, and uh, that's it for myself and Stephen, but Ron Nicoletti will join me uh, the rest of this afternoon, so folks, uh, stick around. And they're into the stretch. Front side to the outside center court. Pianist is third. Channel Lady trying her best. And then Samatar to the inside. But it is center court. And Samatar moving into second. Center court has won the Honey Fox over Samatar. Front side was third.